All right, today I'm having a look at my Supermicro Super Server 5028D TN4T. Uh, this system now has an LSI 9265-8i inserted in the one PCI slot. I had to take off the full height backplate, which does nothing really on that card. There's no external connections. And I'm powering on here. And I figured I'd record some video in case folks are interested to see how to get into the BIOS. In this case, I have UEFI turned on. I don't have dual or legacy mode on. So I don't really know if I'll be able to get into the control H uh, user interface of the LSI RAID adapter. So that's one question I imagine folks would have. I don't plan to do much further testing, uh, if any, on this particular RAID card, because really I'm sticking with the efficiency and low watt burn of what's built in. Meaning, SATA 3 ports controlled by Intel. Okay, so now we have the LSI RAID starting to show up with a blinking cursor. We may get warnings. I have no drives attached to it right now, and I don't actually have the battery backup cache attached at the moment. I do have the Cascade Pro 2.0 dongle inserted for licensing for SSD reads and writes, uh, SSD caching of reads and writes of a RAID 5, for instance. So this card is capable of doing that. And you can see I haven't upgraded my firmware on there since May of last year. It greatly extends the boot time, I can say that safely, and increases the watt burn by what looks like about 30 to 40 watts right now, since I powered on the machine. Um, we're at 78 watts at idle. Uh, I think I overstated that, sorry, I do have all the drives inserted, so never mind, it's only burning 10 to 20 watts at the moment. Of course, we're not loading the rate or doing anything. So it appears to be hanging for an awful long time. It's interesting because just before recording this video, I did boot it once and successfully answered a question when it said, hey, do you uh, not have a battery attached? And I confirmed that and got past this. So a little odd. I would say that's taking way too long. So instead of a power off to power on state, this time I'm doing a restart. And let's see if we have any better luck this time around. Again, for my Windows 10 workstation needs with a, a GPU in this PCI slot, um, Going with UEFI only BIOS works just fine. I can boot ESXi 6.0 or Windows 10 just fine that way. But if someone were interested in trying to build a NAS or uh, make a nice RAID 5 out of this with an SSD for caching, well, yeah, you would wanna put in something like this card. The cables would be very thick and clumsy and you'll see in some photos I've got. Um, <laughs> it's kind of an understatement really. Uh, okay, this boot still does seem to be taking Awfully long. Okay, so we're getting into setup now. Uh, okay, looks like I can get into configuration. Y for continue loading configuration utility. Zero virtual drives, all that's expected. The BIOS, sorry, the post is finishing and now it looks like I'm in. Uh, mouse is going to be a problem. Let's also get the video quality cranked up here a bit. Okay, we'll get rid of that kind of JPEG looking dithering. There, crystal clear fonts. 
we're good. So I'm using iKVM. I'm using a, a way for you to see what I'm doing without an operating system on there. That's just pointing the IP address of the uh, IPMI interface on the Super Micro motherboard. Um, so it gives me a way to record, you know, VGA video. It looks decent, but not doing so well with the mouse. So we're gonna have to go old school and hit enter key on my keyboard and see what happens or tab around. Okay, good. All right. So yeah, I'm convinced we can get in. How about alt X for exit? And that didn't work. So I'm having a little trouble seeing where my cursor is. It's a pretty bad interface for seeing what's going on, but you can see now exit is highlighted. Tab, enter for yes. And it's telling me to go ahead and reboot my system. Interesting. Control Alt Delete did the trick. And now let's see what happens this time around. While that's coming up, I do have a picture to show you. I was talking about the cables being a bit of a challenge to fit. So here you can see I've removed the back plate. I've inserted the LSI card. The back plane for the drives clears easily, especially with this notch here. And the SFP connectors actually clear the back plane. So you can do it, but you'd have to get rid of a lot of slack of cables. You'll still be able to get the side of the case on. There's actually a fair amount of room here for cables. It's just clumsy because they're way too long. Okay, we're going to keep getting this message. So I, I can't skip over it. I've got to actually go in and get everything to factory defaults before I can get a normal boot going here. So much for a shortcut. Okay, so after I get that done, Tab, tab, tab. Okay, I'm in. I'm not really sure where this is going to happen. Maybe controller properties. I'm looking for some big honking factory reset. How about back? Um, let's just see if for some reason I can actually get a mouse back. Let's try the single mouse. Cool. I got myself a mouse. So that was worthwhile. So that's not really going to do much, but this is going to be a whole lot easier with the mouse. Single mouse mode is your friend if you're an IPMI fan and want to use LSI. Okay, I'm going to go through the menus and see if I can remember how to get back to factory default so it stops whining about the fact that no drives are attached. All right, nothing was really changed there. I 
There we go. Clear configuration. If I cared about my data or any drives I wanted to ever attach again, I just lost my chance to ever fix. Or, um, well, not really. I could attach the drives and it should import the uh, RAID config that's on them. So it's telling me to restart the system. Now I need my mouse back and my keyboard back. All right, got my mouse back. So now I control delete or something to that. All right, I'm putting my mouse back to the normal mode, go back to macro, reboot the system. And now we should see a normal boot with a control H prompt. Should I want to get into the bias of the LSI RAID adapter? Most systems like my ASRock motherboard before it, you had to hit the um, select boot device menu on a Supermicro that's F11. And then you pick the LSI card from it. And um, if that made any sense, the sequence was actually uh, in an article of mine. And that's actually control H first when it prompts you and then F11 to get into that boot sequence I was talking about. Okay, right here's the uh, old article about how to do that. Let's get that on your screen here. And that's the procedure. Okay, so. While I was talking there, probably missed control H if it came up at all. Not really sure. Okay, Windows is coming up. So yeah, I missed control H if it showed up. So I'll need to watch more carefully next time. You'll get to see how ridiculously fast Windows 10 booted on a Samsung 850. Evo, two terabyte drive. So we've now established that a normal boot can happen without any warnings. You just power on the machine uh, and it boots. Actually a reboot, a soft reboot. We haven't actually tried from a cold power off to boot to see if it works normal. Because that first time from a cold state powering up, I actually had a problem way back at the beginning of this video. video. So 45 seconds in, when the bias beeps for the next steps. I think what's happening, there we go, is it's taking much longer because the card is in there, way beyond uh, the normal 45 seconds for power on self from when you power on the machine till it starts booting Windows 10. Um, putting this card in extends that at least 30 seconds. That's what I'm thinking. And here we are with this taking incredibly long. So it appears we have a hang again. Let's try control delete, see if that works. Nope. So I'm gonna go in the bias and turn off the super micro splash screen to reveal any kind of messages I might be missing from the super mic, sorry, from the LSI card. It's a long shot. It probably won't do much for this one in five boot hang thing I'm experiencing that happens on both warm and cold starts we've now discovered. But maybe it'll get me uh, I don't know, further insight of what might be going on during the boot process. Just in case something's being echoed behind this splash screen that we can't see because of the super micro overlay. Again, absolutely a long shot.
So this is a screen if we get past this hang where we should be able to uh, hit control H, get prompted, there it is. All right, so turning off the splash screen is not really needed. Control H prompt did happen. And I got right in, didn't have to do an F11 and select after boot. So it got even easier than this procedure on a, on a super micro motherboard. On consumery motherboards like this ASRock Z68 Sandy Bridge machine I had, this is the procedure I had to do. Here I just had to hit control H and I'm in. Um, so I think that's about it. We're seeing some instability on um, one in every five boots or so. And on the good side, we uh, managed to get slick mouse control, which I never had over here, even with a local attached mouse, it was very herky-jerky. So IPMI and Supermicro combined with an LSI rate adapter is an excellent combination, if that's your thing. Um, and if you were to watch this video, it got you past any kind of bumps in the road, uh, should you decide to try a card like this in your super server. Specifically, the chassis I'm talking about looks like this, where you'd replace perhaps that GPU or that one PCI slot, and you'd go ahead and put the LSI in instead. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching and for visiting tinkertry.com.